had a couple requests for some more game file videos and one in particular reminded me that I said I was going to do one on uh, legalities involving game foul. So since I'm out here throwing a little watermelon to these birds, I figured I'd go over that real quick. So, a couple of things to start off. Number one, it doesn't matter in the eyes of the ill-informed public, and I don't mean that in a negative way, I'm just saying they only hear one side of the story, but it does not matter to them what you say you have your game foul for, they're gonna expect, they're just gonna assume the worst. So you gotta go out of your way if you wanna not be hiding in the shadows to show people that you're not doing anything illegal. All right. Now, that is the question. What is legal? Well, that's going to depend on the state you live in and the country you live in. I would advise you to spend some time on the internet and research your specific county and your specific state and see what your laws are. Okay, for starters, Let's not even let's not even say game foul for a minute. Let's just say poultry. It might be illegal to have poultry within the limits of the city you are inhabiting. Or it might be illegal for you to have more than a certain number of hens. Or it might be illegal for you to have any roosters at all so don't be surprised if code enforcement comes and wants to have a little talk with you about that if you uh especially if you've got neighbors and you're not going out there trying to get you know make friends with them sorry if my camera's not really picking up the birds as much i'm trying to multitask here but, uh, yeah, then um, you're just setting yourself up for failure, really. Now, the next thing is let's say you are in an area where you're allowed to have chickens and you are allowed roosters. All right. Is there a set number you're allowed to have per the amount of acres you're on? Some places have codes like that. Next thing is... Going back to country, what country are you in? I know certain countries, I believe in Europe, have outlawed the practice of dubbing, where the comb and waddles are removed, like on this rooster. Alright? They don't care or uh, see it as a lesser problem for a bird to go through frostbite or to get its comb tore up you know, in a wire fight, which if you don't know what a wire fight is, that's when you have a bird get out or a young bird come up to the pen and tries to fight another bird through the wire. And basically, due to the nature of these birds, they tear each other up on this metal wire. It's basically the same thing as running your fingers over a cheese grater. It's not pretty. All right, but getting back to that, certain countries don't allow you to dub. All right, so if you're living in one of those countries, you got to watch yourself. And then if you're buying and selling birds, you got to watch yourself. Certain states require you to have import and export papers just to go across state lines for your birds. If they show up at your house, you don't have them, or they get a call from your postmaster saying, hey, this guy's got birds here and he doesn't have any permits, you're in trouble. Also on the topic of shipping birds, don't be stupid about it, okay? If you're sending like six to 12 birds to the same address or the same state, 
multiple times within a short couple of months, they're going to suspect you're up to illegal activity. Also, don't go around shipping birds when it's too hot or too cold. Now, when I was younger, there was guidelines for that, regulated by the post office, but I honestly don't know how well they adhere to them these days. Another thing about shipping, make sure you're using approved containers with the biofilters so that basically you want them to know that you're trying to abide by the laws that they dictate because you really don't want to cause yourself more headaches than you need. Okay. Also, your state regulations might require you that if you are selling birds, that you become enrolled in the National Poultry Improvement Plan. Now, if you've watched my videos in regards to Tommy Carano's case, he was NPIP certified, which means that a state inspector comes to his farm on a regular basis, looks at the overall health of the birds, the facilities, cleanliness, etc., and, um, you know, basically gives him a passing or failing grade. So, those are not game foul. So the problem with that is, even in spite of him following the rules, as much as he did, he still had his birds confiscated, and he is still in an ongoing legal battle. Now... Had he not been a member of the Poultry Improvement Plan, I honestly can't say if it would have helped him not show up on the radar or if it would have hurt him by making it look like he was trying to hide his operation. All I'm saying is there's a, there's a system in place. It's to help prevent the spread of disease and... If you're willing to have a state inspector on your place, it also helps you increase your ability to sell birds. And it shows, should you ever get into legal trouble, in my opinion, that you're not trying to hide anything or you're not trying to conduct any illegal activities. All right? So what constitutes illegal activities? Well, that's why you need to go back to your state and federal rule books. Because, I'll tell you, I see people posting sparring videos on Facebook. They're just asking for trouble. The law does not delineate the difference between a spar, which is a quick, um, how do you want to put it? It's not really practice. It's a, I guess you could say, quick evaluation of a bird's athletic ability versus a full-blown fight. They also don't care if your bird got out, raised cane, and damaged a bunch of other birds, and you weren't there. If they roll up on your place and you've got six birds that you're fixing because they got hurt, because a tie cord broke and you've got them in hospital pens they're going to claim you just got done hosting a fight all right so build good pens check your tie cords make sure your facilities are in order okay the other thing they're going to look at if you ever come to that situation is they're going to look at your overall facilities now we just got about three inches of rain in the last couple of days, so everything's a soggy, sloppy mess. However, if you look at these pens, there is still grass in the pens. They're probably going to get moved here in the next day or two. And you can tell the pens are mobile, easily to be moved. And if you were to look inside, you'd see the bedding is clean. These birds aren't standing in four inches of manure or anything like that, okay? They're not infested with parasites. They're healthy. They're happy. What kind of things 
do they constitute as evidence of illegal ventures? Honestly, they'll just take whatever they can find and try and tie it in. Now, I trim the spurs on my roosters to prevent them from injuring the hens. But they consider that evidence of an illegal venture. I trim the combs on my birds. Not only is that a preventative measure for frostbite, but it's also required for adult males in the show arena. But they'll try to tell you that it's for fighting. If you have vitamins, every farmer uses vitamins in some regard. Most people take vitamin supplements. But if you have those, especially if they come from Mexico or the Philippines, they're going to say you're fighting. If you have syringes, same thing. You got, you know, a kit to stitch yourself up and it happens to be in the barn. You know, let's say you do metal work and you need a kit in case you cut your hand open. Well, you had it in your barn, so obviously you're, you're stitching up roosters that were engaged in a legal fight. So what I'm really trying to emphasize here, document everything that you do in regards to your farm to prove that you are doing it for legal purposes with the welfare of the animal in mind. Do not sell to people who are even hinting at fighting a bird because you never know what kind of intentions they really have. They might be an undercover cop. You won't know until you get that knock at the door. I've known breeders who flat out say on their site, if I so much as get a feeling that you're going to fight my birds, I will not sell to you because I'm not going to take the risk. I'm a preservationist first. And I can't preserve the birds if I'm sitting in jail. There are people who will sit there and think, oh, I'm on Facebook and private messenger. I'm covered. Hate to break it to you. They will use that as evidence against you. Okay? So, don't discuss anything remotely related to that. Don't upload sparring videos. Don't upload photos of them sparring. And even if you're in a country that's legal, you still got to mind your P's and Q's when you're dealing with people from the U.S., unfortunately. Uh, case in point, if you are a breeder in the U.S., as far as I know in all 50 states, it is perfectly legal to maintain these birds and sell them for breeding stock and preservation and show, etc. But if you're a breeder and you send stock overseas and then you get interviewed by one of their magazines saying, what's the history of your bloodline? Even if you're not involved with the people who bought the birds from you and how they're doing in the arenas there, they will say, you knew that you were selling to someone who was engaging in this activity and therefore we're coming after you. Okay? Um, what other things do they use as evidence? Old magazines. I love to collect the old magazines. They're an invaluable source of history. But because of the fact that they were made and published back in the day with reports of the fights, they consider that evidence. I don't know what a fight report from 1912 has to do with what I'm doing today, but they consider that evidence. Spurs. Spurs are another thing. Personally, I think that spurs are a historical artifact that not only shows craftsmanship, 
but much like other implements of days gone by, it's a look into our history. And I feel like they should be something that should be collected and preserved. That being said, there are laws against transporting them across state lines. And you better believe that if you have them, even if they're in a glass case on your property and you have birds, you just got a whole bunch more charges added to you. All right. I got into these birds because I love the breed. I love their temperament, their longevity, how hardy they are, their history, and I'm really into genetics. So just some of the odd color patterns that come out of these fascinate me to no end. I got into these birds in 2003. That was when I got my very first American game fowl. At that time, they had just outlawed the sport in Oklahoma. And by the time I graduated college, they had outlawed the sport in all 50 states. Step up, conduct yourselves as valuable members of society, and don't play into the stereotypes that they so often portray in the media in this country. That's a big part of what they go after with these birds. They claim, oh, it's, it's not only cruelty, but it's illegal gambling, and there's drugs, and there's illegal gun sales, and there's, you know, human trafficking and all that. I wasn't around in the 70s. I can't tell you what things were like back then. I wasn't even around in the 90s with these birds. But from what I've seen and what stands to reason, it's that once you outlaw something, you encourage outlaws to congregate around that activity. So it's not necessarily that all these crimes didn't happen prior to the sport being outlawed in this country. But what I'm saying is it became more prevalent once the people who refused to give it up went underground. Because criminal elements love clandestine activities like that. Dress up. Conduct yourselves appropriately. Reach out. Help your community. Make yourselves someone in your hometown, in your country, who is respected and valued as a member of society rather than someone they want to lock up. I know that might sound harsh, but that's the reality of things right now. And if you're someone who is super passionate about raising multiple bloodlines and you just can't give up having a yard of 200 roosters, even as a preservationist, you might have to just start looking around at what states are more gamefowl friendly. Uh, far as I know, Colorado has some of the most strict laws, and there are states down south where the laws are a lot more relaxed. Why did I move to Minnesota? Eh. Honestly, the reasons didn't have anything to do with the game foul. Um, I just know that I want to keep raising them as long as I can and preserving them for the next generation. Plain and simple. So, I hope that that gives you guys an idea of what you're up against. And... Um, as the old saying goes, mind your P's and Q's with social media. I'm not advocating conducting illegal activity. All I'm saying is the wrong word to the wrong person can be put in the wrong context and can get you in a world of hurt in a hurry. 
and I don't wish that on anybody in this hobby. So, no, that's probably not what you were expecting when you said you wanted to see some more game file videos. But sometimes you get what you need, not what you want. So, thanks for watching. Share this. Uh, I feel it's an important message for those in the game file community. Not just American game file, but Spanish, Caribbean, Filipino, Asian, all of you guys. We're all in the same boat. Let's work together.